Hello, Tartar Guard friends. Hey, everybody. It's Jason Blaha here, and it's time for another Orc Mode workout. And today was Max Effort Squat Day. And this went pretty good, and you guys are going to notice what I'm going to do moving forward with all the Max Effort stuff. I've got all my bands and chains really organized in a way that lets me fine-tune everything. And we're not going to do any reverse band stuff. Everything is going to be basically straight weight with accommodating resistance. And I have everything set now to where I think I should have 10 pounds or less of extra non-plate resistance at the bottom. And then the accommodation goes on the way up. So if people want to know how much am I doing at the hardest part of the lift, you just need to count what's on the, on the bar. Uh, because realistically, you're going to be within 95% of your max. In other words, if you hit a max with accommodating resistance, wherever you are at the weakest point of the lift is going to be 95% or more or more of your one rep max. So in other words, if you have 400 at the bottom, you know that your max is probably 405 to 415, right? Even if you're locking out 500 at the top. I and mean, we just gotta be realistic about this stuff. Uh, a lot of this we're doing to train acceleration. We're training to uh, learn to grind, learning to push through harder. We're training to sometimes get used to a heavier load at the top in your hands on your back but still getting a full range of motion movement to where we're still training with very, very heavy weights at the hardest part, just like we would on a raw lift. So that, that's the idea. That's what we're doing. Um, so this is going to be a lot easier for everyone to track. It's going to be easier for me to track. And what I'm going to do, um, I think I'm going to alternate for now. I'm going to add band tension, start with really light bands like today. This is 30 pounds of bands, right? This is 30 pounds of bands at lockout. Yes, I've measured it. So I know what all my bands are. So this is only 30 pounds being added to the top, and we're talking about five pounds, maybe. Maybe five pounds at the bottom, right? If that, maybe less. Because it's just barely, barely any tension, just like finger tension on each side. So it'll make it easy. And then I'm gonna start really heavy on chains, and then I'm gonna alternate and start heavy and decrease weight every time I max effort off of chains. And then we're gonna increase with the bands, because bands are a little harder. And so it's going to create a nice uh, contrast back and forth on my max effort work so that we break up the accommodation, but we are still hitting variations of the same lift. So we're going to get a lot of specificity right directly to the box squat. And it's forcing me to, to work on that weak spot. Um, and I'm going to have to work a lot more on my quads. That, that's going to be something that gets addressed later today. Um, and I've had to just kind of cave in and buy a spud belt. And I should have it by the end of the week. I should hopefully have it before... Uh, the next squat day for dynamic day. But we got 435 with 30 pounds of band tension. So 435, keep in mind my max box squat last time was 440 with no accommodation. So we're only five pounds off. So basically we, we hit that again at the bottom, but with a little extra resistance at the top. So I'll take it. Uh, I went pretty easy on this today. I decided to go ahead and try to ramp up a little bit on this deficit sumo. Uh, the 485 really hurt my thumb, but I'm like, let me just chalk up good, get a good grip on it, and let me try to go over 500. And I got the 500, and I just decided to quit. I got 505. And I'm just like, you know, that's the heaviest I've pulled sumo deficit. That's a PR. I already hit a PR on my box squat. Let's take it easy. We'll take that PR for what it's worth, log it, and we'll do better next time. Because I felt good. Everything felt strong. I'm like, I'm not going to tempt fate and on a regular old training week, try to hit a really hardcore new PR. Like, look, that's, that's the heaviest I've pulled on a sumo deficit. That'll go up. But again, it was immediately after uh, hitting a box squat max effort. So it's like, that's fine. We'll take it. It was a good training effect. And I just stopped there with only two heavy singles because I ramped up to those, by the way. Um, then I decided to do five by five on my rows. And I increased the weight slightly so that I could do five by five instead of six by six. And I'm basically, I'm looking a lot more like if uh, you guys are going to hear me talk about a little bit. Some of the, the data coming out on tension, myofibular hypertrophy, maximum recoverable volume. And I need to make sure that every bit of my volume on my accessory movements is giving me the most possible training effect. Right. We're trying to get as strong as possible with the size. And so we need to be thinking in terms of, of efficiency also. If I just want to do some extra fluff, I can do that on smaller lifts. I can do that with curls, okay? I don't need to do that with rows. I don't need to do that with incline bench. So we did a five by five and it went fine. I mean, this was relatively challenging. This was actually hard. My fifth reps were hard. 
on all five sets. So good weight. And it's only 215. But doing this from the chest support, the 215 is hard for sets of five. Especially using no momentum. It's not a seal row because with the seal row you flop. There's no flop. You know, there's no flop. I'm having to pull this from a dead stop while locked in. Um, it's definitely tougher. It's a lot harder than a pin lay row. But that's good because I'm feeling it. I'm actually feeling my lats, feeling my biceps. I'm feeling all that stuff. So it's a good thing. The interesting thing is that when I got to my belt squats, they were a catastrophe today. My hip belt squats, I decided I wanted to mess around with my chains because I'm like, I got all these bigger chains. Let me see if I can just use chains. And I couldn't find a way to make it not excruciating no matter what I did. I tried a belt, right? I tried just putting, putting it around my belt and it killed my hips, the chain digging in. Because my problem is, is like I realized that I don't like that other smaller chain and belt. It left... Uh, chain bite all down my quad last week like to the point where I almost have an infection so and I put neosporin and stuff on it because it tore the skin so it actually tore the skin on my on my quad on my up on my upper thigh I'm using the smaller chain so I'm like okay there's that and then the issue of weight well with this I can't get deep enough no matter what I do it hurts so bad I couldn't go lower like the belt this killed my groin right killed my whole groin area Next, I tried wrapping just a towel. Wasn't as bad on my groin, but it killed my whole flank and lower back and love handle area. And trust me, guys, I don't mind some discomfort when I train. I mean, I pull deadlifts with a hook grip, right? I deadlift with a hook grip. I don't mind some discomfort. But I'm not a, a total masochist either. Like, no matter what I did with this shit with the bigger chain, it hurt. And the smaller chain rips my skin, and it's going to have a weight limit. And so, again, trying to make this work today just didn't work. I'm wanting to build up to where I do five sets of five with the heaviest weight I can handle for five sets of five and then get progressive overload. But I also need to get deeper. And no matter what I did, I just couldn't get the depth with this bigger chain and these setups because of, again, the, the problem with, with where it hurts. And I finally caved because I wanted to see on the last set how bad the height was because I know I'm really high. I know I'm high. Like I can tell just watching this footage, this is stupid high. This is not going to give me the training effect I really want. I need to be able to hit meet legal depth doing these. I need to hit meet legal depth. I need to reach parallel. And I can tell here I'm way above. And so I even I tried a different setup, and this was the least painful, but it was still excruciating trying to get below a half wrap. It wasn't bad at the top, but the deeper I got, the more it hurt. So then I tried taking the, the towel and the belt All right and for those curious i've got on here that's 225 in plates actually it's more than that 275 i believe in plates 270 in plates and that's 12 pound chain all right so 282 which is actually really heavy so we know because of how high i am even dropping as deep as i can physically go due to the pain and the, the positioning of the the chain and everything we know that based upon a hip belt squat that this is not indicative of uh, where my strength is. Like if I could do these, this much weight to full depth for these reps, this should be like a 600 raw squat, by the way, compared to other lifters who do this, who I've seen their numbers and what they do for this. So we know this is really high. And so I did a side view just to find out how bad it was. And again, transparency, guys. And this side view made me realize I had to go buy the, a different belt. I went ahead and ordered a spud belt. I got one for a measurement. I measured where I need the straps to go down my sides so that I can do this without pain and get it to hang down correctly. So I ordered a spud belt that will handle as much weight as I ever need to put on here because this is basically down near a half squat. And this is as low as I could go with this chain position. I can't go any lower than this. Like watch what, I, watch what happens here. Watch how bad this is. Like people are gonna be like, wow, damn, yeah. Yeah, and I think I got a little deeper as I went, but look how bad that is. Right, that's unacceptable. This is not going to give me the training effect I need. I need better equipment, so I went ahead and dished out the 90 bucks for a spud belt, and it will be here within a couple days. So other than this, the workout was fantastic. This sucked. 
but uh, we'll fix it next time. So I hope it's been informative and I will talk to you guys next time.